اسلام علیکم ناظرین آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں نیا پاکستان اور میں ہوں شہزاد اقبال پچھلے کئی دنوں سے پاکستان پیپلز پارٹی کے فالوورز اور ٹریول آگر سنتھیا رچی کے درمیان لفظی جنگ ٹویٹر پہ جاری تھی لیکن اس جنگ میں مزید شدت آئیے دو روز پہلے جب سنتھیا رچی نے پاکستان پیپلز پارٹی کی ٹاپ لیڈرشپ پہ حراسہ کرنے کے الزامات لگائے ہیں انہوں نے یہ الزام لگایا کہ سابق وزیر داخلہ رحمان ملک نے ان کے ساتھ زیادتی کی تھی دوزار گیارہ میں اور اس کے علاوہ سابق وزیر آزم یوسف رضا گلانی اور سابق وزیر سہت مقدوم شہب الدین نے ان کو حراسہ کیا تھا مین ہینڈلنگ کی تھی ان کے ساتھ ان تمام الزامات کی تردید کی ہے یوسف رضا گلانی صاحب نے بھی مقدوم شہب الدین اور رحمان ملک صاحب نے بھی اور کل ہمارے پروگرام میں سابق وزیر آزم یوسف رضا گلانی کے صاحب زادے موجود تھے علی حیدر نے ہمارے پروگرام میں یہ کہا تھا کہ تمام الزامات غلط ہیں اور یہ الزامات اس لیے لگائے جا رہے ہیں کیونکہ ہم لوگ سنتیا رچی کے خلاف ایف آئی اے میں کمپلین لے کر گئے ہیں جب انہوں نے محترمہ بے نظیر کے حوالے سے ڈیفیمیٹری ٹویٹ کیا تھا اس کا رد عمل ہے کہ اس وقت یوسف رضا گلانی پر الزام لگا رہی ہیں سنتیا رچی اور اس پر بات کرنے کے لیے ہمارے ساتھ موجود ہیں سنتیا رچی سنتیا تینکیو ویری مچ فور جوائننگ اس سنتیا آپ نے اپنے ایک ریسنٹ ویڈیو میں سابق وزیر داخلہ رحمان ملک پر زیادتی کا الزام لگایا تھا اور آپ نے یوسف رضا گلانی جو کہ سابق وزیر آزم ہے اور سابق وزیر سہت مقدوم شاب الدین پر مین ہینڈلنگ کا الزام لگایا ہے ان تمام لوگوں نے سختی سے تردید کی ہے ان الزامات کی بلکہ جو فیملی ہے یوسف رضا گلانی کی انہوں نے کہا ہے کہ وہ آپ کے خلاف کیس فائل کریں گے کیا آپ اب بھی اپنے ان الزامات پر ڈٹی ہوئی ہیں اوکے کل میرے پروگرام پر علی حیدر گلانی جو کہ صاحب زادے ہیں یوسف رضا گلانی سابق وزیر آزم کے انہوں نے کہا کہ ہم آپ کو کوٹ لے کے جائیں گے اور کوٹ میں آپ کو ثبوت پیش کرنا ہوں گے تو کیا آپ اس کے لئے تیار ہیں اوکے یو ایر ریڈی ٹو رسپونڈ آل دی الیگیشنز ایف یو ایر کمفرٹیبل اور اس واقعی کی کچھ تفصیلات بتانا چاہیں کہ یہ واقعہ کب کہاں اور کیسے پیش آیا had on multiple occasions uh, given me massage, back massages, which was not the case. That was an inaccurate statement, and I contacted the reporter for her to correct the statement, which I believe she has now done. He, I have always uh, maintained a friendly, cordial uh, relation when the health ministry, when PPP invited me and facilitated me uh, originally in 2010 to work with them in Pakistan. Uh, there was one incident where Mak uh, former Minister uh, Maktoum Shalbuddin tried to give me a shoulder massage, and it proceeded a bit further uh, out of the blue, and it was unexpected, and I asked him to stay away. That's the end of that story. Right. Uh, the statement by uh, former Prime Minister Ghulani is when he said, I believe, that he only met me one time at a diplomatic reception. That is simply not true. I met him at the presidency not long after he was ousted as Prime Minister. And this was at the facilitation of a couple of Pakistani Americans. Uh, as well as another individual who was in the room with me at the time. Now, I have been in and out of Pakistan for the better part of 10 years. And uh, what I say specifically when it comes to the prime minister, the former prime minister, as well as the interior minister, I know as well as you that the agents, there are log books, and the agencies can very easily go back and refer to when individuals go in and out of places like the presidency. And very simply, when I met uh, the, then, uh, the former uh, prime minister uh, with four other Pakistani men in the room, we discussed a number of topics. And when he went, we went to say goodbye, he gave me a hug where his arms grazed against the sides of my And I pulled away and looked at every other person in the room to see what their reaction was. And all the other men looked down as if it never took place. Now, when it comes to... And you think that you thought that was a touch? Did you think that was a touch? I believe it was, yes. It was an inappropriate uh, uh, hug. I had just met him for the first time. 
that was at the president's house, and I subsequently saw him at diplomatic receptions, and I was polite to him. And I believe uh, afterwards uh, I had met his son, and at the time when I met him, I had not put two and two together. It's an expression we say I didn't realize that he was the former prime minister's son at, at the very instant that he introduced himself. Further, when I realized that he was, it was his father who made the inappropriate gesture, not his son. So why would I say anything rude or be rude to the son who had done nothing wrong to me? And it, and it was at a diplomatic reception where I met his son, and that was neither the time nor the place to discuss such an issue. And this was, this was, a, this was a recent meeting you're talking about? Well, the, uh, when I met the Prime Minister's son, it would have been uh, more recently, I think a couple of years ago, if I remember correctly. I don't remember the exact date. I vaguely remember meeting him, uh, and when I first was introduced to him, I did not realize that, that, that it was uh, Yusuf Ghulani's son that I was actually talking to initially. And right. then towards the middle part of the conversation, I realized it once, and I was very polite to him as he was to me, and that's simply that. Right. And what about the incident? Or Rahman Malik ke saath kya waqiya pesh aaya tha? Yes. He. Uh, this was uh, around the time of the Osama bin Laden incident, uh, and the Interior Minister, whom I had direct contact with, oversaw my uh, work visa uh, directly and uh, as a new person to Pakistan I had no idea uh, when he said Cynthia we need to talk about your uh, visa there are issues between US and Pakistan relations I need for you to come visit me now I had a number of friends that had told me in the past on, for completely unrelated issues that most businesses handled it after hours or at people's homes, at cocktails or receptions or whatever the case is, that meeting in offices is just a formality. And I had met at in the Interior Minister's Ramon Malik's office uh, a handful of times regarding my visa. So when U.S.-Pakistan relations became a problem and he messaged me and said, I need to speak with you about your visa, I will, be, uh, I will send my driver to come pick you. He will bring you to uh, the minister's uh, enclave. I had no way of knowing if it was an official uh, capacity residence. He was always surrounded by a team. I assumed the same would be the case. Right. And when I arrived, what I found, his driver picked, his driver picked me up in a blacked out um, Toyota Land Cruiser, I believe. It was an SUV, or what we call an SUV, or a large Jeep. And uh, when he uh, dropped me off, I walked into the residence, and I was very surprised to see a large bouquet of flowers. Uh, I was later told that he had a gift for me, which was boxed uh, a, a Samsung tablet of some sort, and I was given a couple of drinks. And about maybe a, a drink and a half, I started to feel dizzy and unwell, and he said that I perhaps I should lie down, and the next thing I know, I'm on a bed, and he is on top of me. Okay, and then you Would say... Would you like for me to go into more detail? No, that's perfectly all right. And then you said you were... And they have done it with you. And you have given an interview with an independent Urdu. So tell me if this is right or wrong. You have told me that you have given a drink, and after that you didn't have your senses. And when you have done it with you, then after that you have given a drink with 2,000 pounds. Do you know what you have said? And what was the money for you? Can you say this in the interview? And what was it all about? What, so what I remember, and I, so I spoke to the author to help clarify these things because I believe, and, I, and she should have uh, recorrected uh, some things in the article. Uh, what I remember, because I was very dizzy, and I remember Ramon Malik being on top of me and being in and out of consciousness, and I remember him saying, don't worry, I won't spill inside of you. Those were his exact words verbatim. And then after the act took place, his driver uh, or whomever it was, the same gentleman that came and picked me up, helped me get dressed. Uh, uh, Ramon Malik uh, said that I needed to separate severed ties with the NGO that I was working with, uh, Humanity Hope. 
who was being run by Farhana Swati, who is the daughter of the former federal health minister, excuse me, former minister of science and technology, uh, Mohammed Azam Khan Swati. Right. Uh, federal uh, uh, Minister uh, Ramon Malak said for me to sever ties with this INGO because Minister Sawadi was being investigated by the U.S. government for tax evasion, and I would have difficulties with my income. So here was we handed some cash to the driver. I remember him handing. He said, "Here, two, here's here's two thousand pounds." Here is a, a, a Samsung tablet, and the, the, all, the, all of the stuff was taken to the vehicle, and I was escorted out to my vehicle with the driver and another person. Mm -hmm. And I, the entire time, I was dizzy and barely able to walk on my feet. Right. So he handed over the money to the driver who had come. So to pick they gave you two thousand pounds to the driver who had come to pick you up. सिंधिया हम इस बात पर यकीन रखते हैं कि हरासमेंट के केसेस पर विक्टिम या एलेजेड विक्टिम ये उसका हक है कि वो कब बात करना चाहे और वो किस तरीके से बात करना चाहे किसी भी वाकये के बारे में लेकिन फिर भी लोग सवाल कर रहे हैं कि इस बारे में आपने पहले बात क्यों नहीं की नौ साल पहले इन इल्जाम का जिक्र क्यों नहीं किया क्या आप शेयर करना चाहेंगी कि उस वक्त वो क्या सर्कमस्टांसिस थे जिसकी वजह से आप बात नहीं कर पाई और आप क्योंकि एक एम्पावर्ड खातून है आपके पास आवाज भी थी आप अमरीकी शहरी भी हैं फिर भी आपने उस वक्त चुप रहना जरूरी समझा वो क्या सर्कमस्टांसिस थे उस वक्त um he said that he would help me get an an additional job these are all things that he had said beforehand uh before the rape took place that he was there to help me and his english was not very good at that time but these are the things that i remember him communicating to me um again i was alone i was being hosted by pbp who would believe me if i had reported the incident to the local police who would believe me if i who would i report this to the most powerful man in the country run by the same government you tell me what would a woman like me what would a, any woman do in my circumstance and i later did tell someone at the u.s embassy I, that i invited several days later to attend an event with me because i wanted to speak with him privately and get his feedback and his response he his response was less than supportive it was less than adequate he said right now u.s pakistan relations are uh on, on a roller coaster right now give it some time and i'll try to introduce you to someone else whether they what they did was absolute lack of follow-up at that point in time so i did speak to someone at the u.s embassy out who was a u.s embassy employee but outside of the embassy what they what whether or not they filed something or documented something in their computer systems is beyond me but i am following up with the u.s embassy now right but our correspondent yesterday uh, he wrote to the embassy us embassy in pakistan our reporter ne us embassy se sawal kiya tha aur is par us embassy ka jawab bhi aaya hai us embassy ne kaha hai ki hum tamam ameriki shahriyo ko support karte hain lekin kyunki jo private matters hote hain usko madde nazar rakha jata hai aur unki details share nahi ki jati aap keh rahi hain ki aapko support nahi kiya gaya lekin us embassy ka ye jawab hai ki wo har ameriki shahri ko support karte hain all american citizens but you are saying when you told them nobody supported you from the us embassy i got less than adequate appropriate response i was offered to fly out i was offered to make arrangements to go home uh and again this was outside of the embassy this was um with an american who was uh, uh who i had attended a few events with and i had asked for his advice on how to handle this particular matter and he said we can help facilitate you getting home and that was about it and i specifically requested for him to connect me with someone else right and, and do you have all this document kya us embassy ke sath hone wali tamam baatcheet recorded hai kya uska evidence aapke paas maujood hai I I'm not in the habit of recording conversations with my fellow Americans. I usually trust what my fellow Americans will do. No, what I meant is did you email them? Was there something no, in writing? In terms No, no. Okay. 
So we were in communication, and this, this particular individual and I were in email communication, and I had asked him if he had followed up on the matter uh, at hand. So that was communicated. Not long after this event, a few months later, I had to go back home to the States to attend to personal family matters, and my laptop was stolen, and I found some of my files and some of the things that I kept in my hard drive wiped. So I had some of my information, not only some of my personal property stolen, just my laptop, not my jewelry or anything else, but I had my laptop stolen from my computer from the uh, Islamabad airport. And I, when I received my baggage a few weeks later, uh, I found it had been rerouted through uh, Italy. And when I opened my bag, everything was in place, including my laptop cover, but my laptop was gone, and much of the data that I had on my laptop was missing as well. Right, so you didn't press charges because... You didn't press charges because you understood that Rahman Malik is very powerful. You didn't do it in public, it was your right. So did you tell someone else about this? Because in the harassment cases, if you have told someone else when it happened, then it will also be considered as evidence. Cases of harassment. I understand that, but I believe Cynthia, I'll come back to that. We'll talk about this too, because in our program, Yusuf Raza Gilani is the same. Ali Haider Gilani said that why their family is in the court of Cynthia Ritchie, they have filed a complaint, this is the rule of the rule. Whatever they are doing, this is the rule of the rule. We'll talk about this too. 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 Cynthia Ritchie, they have filed a complaint in the court of Pakistan People's Party. زیادتی کے اور مین ہینڈلنگ کے الزامات لگائے ہیں آج پروگرام میں ہمارے ساتھ موجود ہے سنتیا ریچی سنتیا یسٹرڈے ان آر پروگرام علی حیدر گلانی سنتیا کل ہمارے پروگرام میں علی حیدر گلانی نے اور اس سے پہلے سابق وزیراعظم یوسف رضا گلانی صاحب یہ آن ریکارڈ کہہ چکے ہیں کہ آپ نے ان کے اوپر مین ہینڈلنگ کا الزام اس لیے لگایا ہے کیونکہ یوسف رضا گلانی کے ایک اور بیٹے قاسم گلانی نے آپ کے خلاف ایف آئی ای you have you're accusing yusuf raza gilani for manhandling you not at all that's that i had no i in fact i don't even remember reading anything about him uh and even if i had that's not who i am as a person and i think if uh, I, i think i recall or reading that prime minister gilani denied even meeting me but one time at a diplomatic reception any of the intelligence agencies or any one of the authorities can look in the log books and see that I was at the, the president's house at a particular time several years ago, not long after Prime Minister Galani was out as Prime Minister. Those log books are kept as records. Anyone can, uh, the That's fine, Cynthia, but are you accusing Yusuf Raza Galani? What is the reason why they have complained in the FIA and that you have a complaint on the FIA and that you have also filed a complaint on the FIA? After those uh, complaints were filed with the FIA? Absolutely not. I have nothing to gain from this. I have nothing. Look, I have been manhandled by a number of men. This is uh, for men across the country, okay? I have, but I have only been raped 
by one person. I have been assaulted by a couple of other men, of which I will tell later. I was writing my memoirs on this. I have no interest. I don't gain anything from this. I have, however, been harassed by PPP for the past couple of years, and I have tried to use my contacts privately to ask them to please quit harassing me online. And when they finally started targeting my sisters and created a fake account and uh, tried to trick them into thinking that uh, we had a long-lost sister from my deceased father's previous marriage, my sisters, who are very naive and who, and who are nice to everyone that they meet, actually disclosed a lot of deeply personal family information, which was later leaked on Twitter, and I was tagged by it, by PPP accounts, and I had to report them to Twitter. So it's become personal. I've been dealing with this for months now from PPP and PTM. It's not just recent, and I tried to handle it slightly. I didn't go to FIA before because the last time I went to FIA, FAA, when I was harassed by this Farhan Burt guy, they did absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I am at my wit's end. I am being harassed. I have been sent death threats. I have been sent rape threats by the so-called big greatest democracy, democratic party in the country. Give me a break. If this is happening, obviously this cannot be defended. It should be condemned. And अगर ऐसा हो रहा है तो वो यकीनन गलत है. उसकी मुजम्मत करनी चाहिए. लेकिन इसका एक मुकम्मल बैकग्राउंड है. ये जो ट्विटर पे लफ्जी जंग आपके और पीपल्स पार्टी के फॉलोअर्स के दरमियान पिछले सात आठ दिनों से जारी है उनका ये इल्ज़ाम है कि ये जंग आपकी वजह से शुरू हुई आपने मोहतरमा बेनज़ीर भुट्टो के ऊपर सीरियस किस्म के इल्ज़ाम लगाए आपने उनको बदनाम करने की कोशिश की उनके बारे में तोहन आमेज़ अल्फाज इस्तेमाल किए जिसकी वजह से पार्टी के फॉलोअर्स में बहुत गुस्सा है वो बहुत ज़्यादा अपसेट हैं तो ये इस तरीके से शुरू हुआ आप उन पर इल्ज़ाम लगाती रहीं और वो आपके बारे में इल्ज़ाम लगाते रहे and obviously uh, consequences were that they were accusing you and as you said they were harassing you as well no this is not when it started this is a smoke screen that tpp is using because they know i was getting closer to discovering their connections with ptm what i actually said in the twitter and i come from the south in the united states where it's considered very disrespectful to speak ill of the dead if you read my tweet and my clarifying tweet what i said was this echo stories i was horrified to see this video of this woman encouraging the rape of this young girl yes. by her guards and because i had been sexually assaulted because i had been raped in this country i immediately was triggered by that and i responded this echo stories that i have been told of what another woman had done and it, from the nazir butcho but this was told to me by senior leaders senior ppp city ministers at the time and they seem to do so almost in a perverse manner this has got to stop this mental harassment the subjugation of the women and more importantly women this power play is a pattern in pakistan and we cannot stop we are, cannot are you saying talk about whatever आप ये कह रही हैं कि जो कुछ आपने मोहतरमा बेनजीर भुट्टो के बारे में लिखा वो मालूम आपको पाकिस्तान पीपल्स पार्टी की सीनियर क्यादत ने दी थी thing i felt sickened by that it, my tweet was in no way intended to defame a deceased woman there were some things about benazir bhutto that i very much admired there were okay, some but things Cynthia. i did admire and in fact i made a state in my fia report that at one point i actually wanted to interview um bolawo because i felt like that he might have the potential of being uh, a future leader of pakistan because i found him to be a bit different I and people and people's party you know, have known including the interior minister Ramon Malik I made a specific request um a while back for, for to please introduce him to Bilal because I would like to have a sit down conversation with him of what he uh, promised to do two or three others did so this is not has nothing to do it's not a vendetta against anyone but justice must be served if I am found to be telling a lie then i will then i will meet my punishment i will face my punishment i am not going anywhere but i will not stand for this proxy bs that ppp uses to intimidate and subjugate and let me tell you one more thing the rape threats the death threats that i have received from the men have been horrendous but the words of encouragement that because ppp leaked my numbers and my personal information online 
but the number of women that have privately messaged me because they're sick of the Dari PPP has been almost equally overwhelming. It is right. the Dari filthy PPP that has. Cynthia, मेरे पास वक्त खत्म हो जाएगा. ये बताइएगा कि आपने अपने FIA को statement में ये नहीं लिखा कि ये तमाम तर मालूमात आपको पाकिस्तान पीपल्स पार्टी की सीनियर लीडरशिप ने प्रोवाइड की बल्कि आपने ये कहा वर्क विद अथॉरिटीज टू शो द एडिशनल डॉक्यूमेंटेशन टू प्रूव दैट योर ट्वीट वाज नॉट फॉल्स एंड देयर फॉर इट वाज नॉट डेफेमेटरी सो यू आर सेइंग यू हैव डॉक्यूमेंट आप कह रही हैं कि आपके पास डॉक्यूमेंट्री एविडेंस मौजूद है जो आप कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ में पेश करेंगी आई वुड डू वट एवर इज नेसेसरी to prove everything that i have said has been accurate and i will work with authorities to the best of my ability uh, no couple of more last questions because you know ek aur sawal main karna chahunga kyunki jab se ye ilzamat samne aaye hain isse aur sawalat bhi khade hue hain aur people's party ne in sawalat ko apni complaint mein bhi uthaya hai misal ke taur pe unhone pucha hai ki cynthia richi kis visa par pichle 10 saal se pakistan mein kaam kar rahi hai batore travel logger pakistan mein aise bahut se travelers travel loggers aaye jo ke chale jate hain lekin aap musalsal पाकिस्तान में 10 साल से काम कर रही हैं तो क्या आप बताना चाहेंगी कि पाकिस्तान में आप किस वीजा पर काम कर रही हैं इट्स नॉट इन देयर बिजनेस द अथॉरिटीज एंड द अप्रोप्रिएट अथॉरिटीज नो व्हाट आई एम वर्किंग ऑन आई एम रिस्पांसिबल टू द गवर्नमेंट एज अ रेजिडेंट हियर आई एम अ लॉ अबाइडिंग रेजिडेंट इन दिस स्टोरी राइट टुडे पीपल्स पार्टी लीडर सईद गनी ही सेड दैट ऑब्वियसली ऑल योर क्लेम आज पाकिस्तान पीपल्स पार्टी के लीडर सईद गनी ने भी इन इल्जाम की तरदीद की है और उन्होंने कहा है कि आपका किरदार मशकूक है उन्होंने ये भी कहा है कि आप किसी के एजेंडा पर काम कर रही हैं और ये इल्जाम भी उसी एजेंडा का हिस्सा है आप सियासी पार्टीज़ को मलाइन और बदनाम करती आई हैं और उन्होंने ये भी कहा है कि ये इल्जाम उसी एजेंडा का तसलसल है ऑफ एक्ूजिंग एंड एंटी फेमिंग द पोलिटिकल पार्टीज my agenda is the truth and i would expect someone like him to say something like that the truth will come out in court and in the court of public opinion of that i have utmost faith right but when i i saw your timeline obviously when i was researching and you lekin main bhi aapki timeline dekh raha tha aur aap claim karti hain ki aap traveler hain travel logger hain aur aap pakistan ka musbat chehra dikhati hain lekin aapki timeline to ilzamat se bhari padi hui hai aapne siyasi parties ko siyasatdanon ko civil society par बेशुमार इल्जाम लगाए हैं ये इल्जाम सियासी क्रिटिसिज्म की सूरत में भी हैं करप्शन के इल्जाम हैं हरासमेंट और रेप के इल्जाम हैं और यहाँ तक कि आपने लोगों को ट्रेटर भी कहा है आपने सियासी पार्टीज़ को एंटी स्टेट पार्टी भी कहा है अपनी टाइमलाइन पर तो ये सब पढ़कर ऐसा तो नहीं लगता कि आप पाकिस्तान का मुस्बत चेहरा दिखाना चाहती हैं क्योंकि आप किसी एक पार्टी को नहीं बल्कि काफ़ी सारी पार्टीज़ को टारगेट कर रही हैं आप पीपल्स पार्टी नू लीग ए एन को खास तौर पर टारगेट करती रही हैं I wanted to show the positive parts of Pakistan but I also wanted to be objective. There's just as much bad things happening here as there are good things just like in the United States. And tell me, how many Pakistanis live in the United States? And how many of those Pakistanis get in, are very vocal in politics and express their opinion? Why should I be treated any differently? Ha, lekin aapki zyada tar timeline ilzamat se bhari padi hai. आपने जो स्टेटमेंट एफ को दिया है उसमें भी आपने इल्जाम लगाए हैं जैसे मैंने कहा आप क्लेम करती हैं कि आप एक ट्रैवल लॉगर हैं लेकिन अपनी स्टेटमेंट में आपने ये कहा है कि आप पिछले दो साल से इन्वेस्टिगेशन कर रही हैं और आपकी इन्वेस्टिगेशन इस नतीजे पर पहुंची है कि पाकिस्तान पीपल्स पार्टी और पी दोनों एंटी स्टेट एक्टिविटीज़ में मुलविस हैं और साथ में आप ये भी कह रही हैं कि तमाम कार्रवाई जो आपने की है इन्वेस्टिगेशन जो आपने की है इसमें आपको स्टेट एजेंसीज़ ने सपोर्ट किया है तो जब आप कहती हैं कि आपकी टीम इस नतीजे पे पहुंची है कि पीपल्स पार्टी एंटी स्टेट पार्टी है तो उसमें आप अपने आप को अलाइन कर रही हैं स्टेट एजेंसीज के साथ कि उनके साथ मिलकर आपने ये तहकीकत की है There is not not everything is perfect here just like in America or any other place. But if I find something that is interesting and I have worked in politics most of my life. Also, that's a big part of my background in the United States. 
So when I see something that emerges as a human interest story, I wanted to do a story that was different from the more positive things that I was trying to do. And when I started looking into this human rights, uh, the human rights uh, accusations, I found some things to be accurate, but I found a lot of things that were not accurate. And when right. I started getting harassed by PTM and PPP, that's when I started deciding, okay, let's see if, if there's going to be an alignment. Otherwise, why would PPP, who claims to be the most democratic forward-thinking party in Pakistan, be harassing me, and why would they target my family? Well, it's one thing to call me names. It's one thing to call me Jesus. It's one thing to say it's a Zish about me. But when you start targeting my family, and my pers deeply personal family information starts getting leaked. That's where I draw the line. And this happened several weeks ago. And I privately asked a number of members in the PPP to please ask their lower tier in in members to stop harassing my sisters, to stop harassing my family on social media. <laughs> they can harass me all they want to. But this is where I draw Obviously, the line. Obviously, if this is happening, it should stop. But thank you very much for your time, Cynthia Ritchie. Thank you very much for joining us. Cynthia Ritchie, today, we were with us in the program. And we told them that they had put their actions on their actions. They had put their actions on their actions. But they say that they are dirty on their actions. And they are ready to prove their actions. And they are ready to prove their actions. उन्होंने तो इल्जाम लगाए हैं लेकिन उनके इल्जाम की जो तरदीद आई है उस पर हम बात करेंगे एक छोटे से ब्रेक के बाद वेलकम बैक नाजरीन ब्रेक में जाने से पहले सिंथिया रिची हमारे प्रोग्राम में बता रही थी कि जो इल्जाम उन्होंने लगाए हैं वो उनको साबित करने के लिए भी तैयार हैं लेकिन इन इल्जाम की तरदीद कल आ चुकी है यूसुफ रजा गिलानी साहब ने भी बताया कि मैं उनसे पहले नहीं मिला जब मैं वजीर आजम था या उसके बाद शायद उनकी मुलाकात चंद महीने पहले उनसे किसी इवेंट पर हुई थी हमारे ही प्रोग्राम में कल उनके साथजादे अली हैजा गिलानी ने यह भी कहा था कि हम भी चाहते हैं कि इस मामले की मुकम्मल तहकीकत हो और जब तक ये तहकीकत मुकम्मल नहीं हो जाती तब तक सिंथिया रिची का नाम ई पर डाल देना चाहिए नौ साल तक खामोश रहना ये मैं समझता हूँ कि ये भी एक बहुत बड़ा सवाल या निशान है और हम भी इसकी इन्वेस्टिगेशन चाहते हैं और हम चाहते हैं कि उनको फिलहाल ई पे उनका नाम रख दिया जाए और जब तक इन्वेस्टिगेशन खत्म नहीं होती क्योंकि एक बहुत सीरियस एलिगेशन हैं हरासमेंट की और हम हरासमेंट को हमारी लीडरशिप और हमारी जो मेरे वाल साहब है यूसफ रजा गिरानी साहब वो हमेशा इन हरासमेंट के इशूज को बहुत सीरियसली लेते हैं हो या उनके वालिद साहब सबक वजी अजम यूसुफ रजा गिलानी दोनों ये कहते आए हैं कि हमारी पहले उनसे कभी मुलाकात नहीं थी रिसेंटली मुलाकात हुई जबकि सिंथिया ने आज प्रोग्राम में बताया कि उनकी 2013 के बाद उनसे प्रेसिडेंट हाउस में मुलाकात हुई थी जहां पे उनको मैन हैंडल किया था यूसुफ रजा गिलानी ने हबीब अक्रम साहब ने आज दुनिया टी वी अपने प्रोग्राम में इसकी तफसी बताई कि शाहबुद्दीन साहब भी इस इल्ज़ाम की तरदीद कर रहे हैं रहमान मलिक के तर्जुमान ने कल इस बात की तरदीद की थी रहमान मलिक का अपना कोई बयान या खुद उन्होंने टी पर आके इस बयान की अब तक तरदीद नहीं की है आज के प्रोग्राम में इतना ही इसका फीडबैक आप हमें दे सकते हैं हमारे सोशल मीडिया पर इजाजत दीजिए अल्लाह हाफिज़